James, welcome to Edinburgh, your home city, mm. uh, and it's lovely that you're here and have been speaking at the Asia Scotland Institute. And um, as you know, this is a very important subject, your book, Our Britain, um, and My Country, particularly for the Asia Scotland Institute, whose mission is to educate and inspire tomorrow's leaders, and in so doing, to increase their knowledge of Asia, its cultures and its religions. And I know there were a number of events that led you to embark on this journey uh, that resulted in this book that you've been talking about. Could you just say what the, what the thing was that motivated you and got you going? Well, I've spent 20 years or more, I suppose, uh, knocking around uh, Asian Muslim countries, I mean, Afghanistan and then, and then you know, Somalia more recently and Yemen and all sorts of places. So I've seen a lot of um, trouble in Muslim lands, but I've never really looked at the trouble... Uh, surrounding Islam in my own country, yeah. and this seemed a good moment to do this because of ISIS and the recruitment phenomenon that was going on in 2015, mm -hmm. um, and the whole row about migration as well, mm -hmm. um, led to a great spike of Islamophobia, let's mm -hmm. call it, in this country. Mm -hmm. um, that seemed to me to be a very good time to take a survey, I yep. suppose, of Muslims in my own country, um, which is a huge community, uh, which has doubled since the turn of the century, Three million Muslims now live in this country. Mm. Five percent British mm. society is five percent Muslim. Mm. So these are quite startling numbers, you know. And numbers. growing more rapidly than any other section of the, of the population, is it's, that right? It's growing more rapidly, partly through migration, partly through high birth rates. Yeah. Um, but whatever happens, and whatever you think about migration and the policies that um, one could put up against migration, uh, Islam is here to stay. It's yeah. very much a part of our future. I think your um, thesis, too, if I can just put it to you, is that. Mm. that the government doesn't understand this and doesn't really understand how to react to it. I, I think that's true. I don't think the public does either. Uh, I don't think they very well serve the public, I have to say, by the media or by the government. But yeah. the, the fact is that Islam is, you know, society is becoming Islamic in some ways, yes. you know, 5% or whatever it is. So the question is not, you know, how to stop migration. The question is one beyond that, which is how do we live better together? Yes. We've got to find a way. You know, yes. either we go forward into the future together or divide it. And I know which one I prefer to be. That's really the thesis of the book. It's actually an exploration of uh, what might be good and useful about British Islam, which is something that's still emerging. It's yeah. not, sort of, you know, not a formed thing yet, but it, it, is, it is forming. It is kind of um, beginning to take shape. And I know you touch on this, but in, in, a, in a world where some understanding of spirituality is important, we see Christian churches emptying, yes. and yet mosques... At bursting point, and in some cases, I think you said churches being turned into mosques. Yes, it's a striking thing. Well, how do, we, how do you? Yeah. Just, what's the reason for that phenomenon? Well, because the church is empty, and and you know they, they, something has to be done with the building. But I mean, you keep seeing these. I mean, I, I, the congregate, the average congregation now on Sundays in this country in churches is under a million. I think it's mm -hmm. the lowest point ever in a country of sixty-five million. Uh, so people aren't much going to church. Um, but as you say, the mosques are full, and there aren't enough of them. They're still building them. Uh, there's a couple of thousand mosques. It just suggests to me that actually the, the religious life of this country, um, you know, where is it going on? It's going on in mosques rather more than in churches. Um, and I'd rather hope that we, there might be a way that we could learn something from that um, because I don't think people change. I think that you know, as human beings we all need a spiritual dimension to our yes, lives. Yes. It's not being provided by institutional religion anymore in the way that it was for a great many people. I think people are looking for it elsewhere, actually, um, whether it be sport or going off and doing Pilates or, or something. But people need a, mm. you know, funnily enough. But, but Islam actually is still thriving as an institutional religion in a way that Christianity used to. And I think maybe, you know, there's, there's something we could learn from that, possibly. Well, your book certainly leads us along a path to make us think about that. Your talk has certainly opened people's eyes. And we're immensely grateful to you for taking the time to be pleasure, with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you and, very much. And to talk to us about this hugely important subject. Not at all. Thank you very much.